but we do know at the very least that it hits the opiate receptors. It's all illicitly made. So that makes it even more concerning. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Dr. B and today I want to consider nitazines, a compound or a group of compounds that is making it into the illicit drug supply and potentially causing more fatal overdoses because of its potential potency. You'll see why I'm using the term potential. That is why this is important and I want to dispel some myths so we don't demonize an inanimate object like we usually do and give you some information and clarity on this issue. What are they? As I said, they hit the opiate receptors and they are a class of drugs. It's not one drug, nitazine. There's about 20 different compounds and their potency is anywhere the same potency as fentanyl to dozens of times stronger. That in itself is scary, but keep in mind, there is about 20 different of them, okay? And if you're using, you can't possibly be using the one that is dozens of times more potent than fentanyl by itself in the drug supply because everybody would be overdosing. Nevertheless, it is a critical, important feature that you need to be aware of. Uh, where does it come from? How is it used? Where is it used? Well, it's not used in human medicine or veterinary medicine. This stuff was discovered in the 50s by a Swiss pharmaceutical or chemical company. I don't know which. And they were looking for an alternative to morphine, and they decided not to use it. Why? Could have been too unstable to get a compound that is just right for humans. It could have been, hey, it's not cost efficient. It could have been that it's just too potent and everything breaks down to a potent component and it would cost too much to get the part out that is not as potent or the compound out that is not as potent. In any case, it was dismissed, put to the side, and never used. It is simply, strictly, illicitly manufactured. Why is that important? Because in truth, the clinical community, as well as the scientific community, doesn't know anything about this drug. Now, hold on. When I say they don't know anything about this drug, it's not like it's some magical thing that we have to figure all sorts of things out about. I mean it in the sense we know it hits the opiate receptors and there's an expectation of how it's going to act, but we don't know the typical properties about these drugs that we do about something like fentanyl or heroin that has been tested in the lab. For example, we don't know the binding properties. We don't know the half-lives. We don't know the pharmacokinetics and dynamics. But we do know, at the very least, that it hits the opiate receptors. It is causes the same things that anything hits the opiate receptor, and it can be fatal. That we know. Okay, let's move on, okay? Why is it making into the drug supply, and to what extent is it making into the drug supply? Why it's making it, I can only speculate, and I hear commentators saying increased potency as well as cost. I don't know if it's an increased potency issue because you certainly don't want all your patients dead. But if you look at the drug supply out there across the board, it's becoming a lot more unstable and tarnished. And then this itself is a very good reason to really consider stopping using drugs and address your addiction. The drug supply out there is, for the most part, driven by strictly profit. And if you could make something in a lab that's going to cut your costs and reduce the manufacturing and distribution price, you're going to use it. Now, it happens that this stuff is also not retained from an established laboratory where this stuff is made. It's all illicitly made. So that makes it even more concerning. But in general, one shouldn't even be doing illicit drugs and buying it in the street 
Now I'm adding the fact that it's in general much more tainted and driven for profit. And now we have something introduced that we really don't know that much about. We know it hits the opiate receptors. We know it's extremely addicting. And we know it can be contributing to overdose deaths. Okay? And we can leave it at that. The next thing I want to address is, does it respond to Narcan? Now, here I want to add an additional disclaimer. Certainly, I'm not giving medical advice on this channel. I'm trying to educate. I want to reemphasize that on this particular issue. Does it respond to Narcan? And I'm going to give you my thoughts. It seems to be responsive to Narcan because, again, it hits the same receptors and has the same effects. Now, I see a lot of experts online advising people to double up and triple up their doses. I'm not going to say that, and I'm not going to advise you to not do so. There is a very particular reason on my end, and if anyone's a Narcan expert, it's me as a previous ER doc for many years that dealt with Narcan, understand the dosing. I only want to say this, giving more is not better. And I'm not sure advising people to give more when they don't know versus the same amount is good advice. It's up for you to decide and listen to your local representatives when you get your Narcan training and so forth. I do not want to give mass advice on this issue, but it does. The best I can do is tell you it does respond to Narcan. How much Narcan you are to use that it remains to, I will let you decide that on your own. I will advise otherwise if I see fit to people that I deal with personally or people I see in my office or if I'm doing any formal education on this issue. The big picture of it is this. The drug supply is grossly tainted more and more as time goes by. That tainting has to do with supply, supply in the sense that the folks that are putting this stuff out, what supply of things they can get if they have not enough fentanyl, if they have not enough heroin. In addition, it has to do with costs of getting this stuff out for as cheap as possible to increase profit margin. In addition, it does seem to be responsive to Narcan how much of this stuff is out there and to what extent is it contributing to opiate, opioid overdose deaths or drug overdose deaths, we don't really know. And it's difficult to measure because we don't have a quick way to measure this compound in the same that we do for fentanyl with strips and a point of care urine toxicology at the office or in on any other facility. I suspect it is not taking off in the same way as it is in Europe because, and this is not good news, the purity and cost of fentanyl is uh, improving all the time for those that manufacture it. So there hasn't necessarily been a need for tainting the supply or cutting it up with something like a nitazine. Remember, it's a compound, a class of compounds, and there's about 20 different ones. I will leave you with an important thought how we can address uh, the opiate epidemic and the increasing instability of the drug supply out there that is constantly cut up with other things. When you think about how you can deal with this whole epidemic, there's a supply side and there's a demand side. Okay? Demand is the consumer of supplies, people putting it out. And we spend an incredible amount of time dealing with the supply side. There's no evidence or data to back this approach to the drug epidemic, overdose epidemic that we have been going through now for many, many years, and we're on the third wave of the epidemic. I don't know what that means. I need a smart researcher to tell me why do epidemics have waves? Well, I know why. But I think our dollars would be better spent if we spent time on the supply side. Finally, one more thing about nitazine. 
they're calling it the Frankenstein opiate out in the media in the same way they have demonized and made simple the description of some of the stuff out there, zombie drug, zombie opiates, Frankenstein opiates. I don't think this is helpful. Okay, We are increasingly in a social environment that we are dumbing everything down, making it this or that, simplifying it and creating fear for one side and a rush to insanity on the other side. When you call it Frankenstein opioid, it lends itself to how addiction is viewed and those addicted to opiates and other drugs are viewed. I don't think there is anything beneficial or helpful about describing it as a Frankenstein opiate. It is a nitocine, a class of compounds. It's making it into a drug supply. Those on the treatment side and on the policy side and on the control side of supply or trying to control the supply simply need to be aware of it as well as clinicians that are dealing with this on the front lines. I hope that was helpful. See you guys next time. Peace.